Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel, I am Garrett. And in this video, we are talking about some of the things that could be making a home look a little bit basic and how to upgrade, elevate, and fix those things. And we have got a lot to get through, so let's get into the video. Now, the first thing that can make a home look basic is the furniture set. And I talk about this a lot because I'm very passionate about it, but a furniture set originally was designed to make decorating easier for everyone. And I can respect that. However, having the furniture set definitely does look like it's store bought. It looks a little bit basic. And I think you can elevate that in some really easy ways by not buying a set of furniture or by mixing in some other pieces that are not a part of that set. There's nothing wrong with going to furniture stores that sell sets and picking individual pieces or picking different sets and mixing them together. That's cool. It's a good way to get those sets, get an affordable option that actually matches, is cohesive and works together, but you can layer some other pieces in that have a lot of character. And do not forget about mixing in some soft goods and some decor that are just different, that have a little bit of that personality infused into them. Because at the end of the day, furniture sets are made to be impersonal so that they can sell them to a broad range of people. And that's not what you wanna be. That's not what your home is. It's not where everybody else lives, it's where you live and it should reflect you, your family, your lifestyle, and your needs. Now, the next thing that definitely makes a home look a little bit basic is the gaudy glam decor. There's nothing wrong with glam, and I love that because I'm pretty glamorous myself, but that's not the point. A part of the issue with glam was also that things were just not great quality or not well-designed. Like we saw tufted sofas with the crystal buttons. That doesn't look comfortable to me. It doesn't look long lasting. And we also saw a lot of that like fake rhinestone vibe where it's literally just plastic with some silver painted on the back of it. That's not what you want in your space. If you are interested in glam, if you have it and you want to transition into something that's just a little bit more sophisticated, look at Hollywood Regency styles, mixing silver and gold, mixing gray and creams. That's very elegant and it's something different that we don't always see. You can take those glam pieces you have and work them into a different style to upgrade to elevate a little bit without it looking basic and not so much like we know who you were following at the time and we all know who that is and you did the same thing they did or you went to this store and you bought that set because everybody had it and everything I get it I respect it but if you want to elevate and upgrade it it's actually pretty easy to do just following those simple steps now the next thing that can make a home look a little bit basic is when you are decorating your home to look like a catalog I get all of the catalogs, I see them, I know what the decor is, what's out there, and what the style is. But if you just look at those and say, I wanna live in a house like that, it's going to look like a catalog. They're intended to sell products and it looks generic to sell to more people. And I can respect that from a business perspective. I love that for them. But in your home, you want it to feel like you. So don't just think you need to buy everything from a catalog or if you don't buy everything from this store, it's not good or luxurious or expensive or whatever. Take the time to build your personal style into what you are seeing take inspiration from those catalogs, that's what they're there for, and infuse that into your house. Maybe it's a color scheme, maybe it's a, a shape or a piece of artwork, a specific style. You can incorporate that into your space without it feeling generic or like you saw it out of a catalog and it doesn't have much personality because in that catalog they didn't have family photos that you should have but you don't because it's not in the catalog. It's an entire thing. Focus on you, your personal style, and your life, and what works best for you. Catalogs are meant to be generic. And unlike on this channel, you are not generic to me. You are not from a catalog. You are not just a commodity on this channel. We are a family. So be sure you join our family and you take a moment to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification to get notified every time I upload. And I know, I hear you, I read the comments, I see it all, and everyone wants to know, where is the precious baby Albert? So, let's go get him. Oh, there he is. Are you here to see everyone? Or are they here to see you? Now, many of you will know, Albert is 17. So not much excites him outside of his dinner. He tries his best and he definitely loves a good snuggle and a cuddle. Mm. Oh yes, Albert, you're definitely a cuddly little pup, aren't you? Mm, mm, mm. Okay, baby, we're gonna let you go and we're gonna let you find those bully boys, all right? Mm. Now the next thing that can definitely make a home feel basic 
are the bedding sets. Now, I love luxurious bedding. I think it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's relaxing and comfortable, and that's what I need in my life. But the basic sets of bedding that you get at the department store do not give you that. They are giving me polyester. It's not the vibe you want. We want luxurious bedding. So do not look for those patterned bedding sets where you get, you know, the comforter and the pillow that matches and you get the sheets and the extra pillowcases all in one package. You know what I mean? Like the plastic zip up packages that have all of it. We don't want that. We want to steer clear of it. I would recommend that you actually look to hotel bedding for inspiration. While I don't want you to just look at a hotel and say, I wanna live like this and my house should look like it, I think hotels actually do a really good job at selecting very elevated and luxurious bedding. They usually will use two different tones that are slightly different, like a white and a cream. If you don't like white sheets, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you don't, and maybe you say, Garrett, I like black sheets. Mix black and gray. I'd also recommend you look at mixing different textures. Maybe you go for a cotton sateen for your sheets, and I actually have a cashmere duvet cover for my bed, but maybe you opt for linen or something like that because you are now layering together and you're building on what is on your bedding as opposed to just buying a generic set. Look for a throw, look for an interesting accent pillow, maybe a designer fabric. This is actually one of my favorite pillows. This is Kelly Wurstler for Lee Jaffa. I will link it for you down below, but this is a combination of two different tones. We have a bright, fresh, crisp white and an off-white that feels very luxurious and sophisticated. Look for something like that when it comes to bedding and mixing some different tones together as opposed to getting a generic bedding set out of a package because they do not feel personal. It doesn't feel luxurious or elevated. It feels generic, it feels basic, and it feels like a store is mass producing them just to sell them, and that's not what you want in your home. Now, the next thing that definitely makes a home feel basic is patterned drapes from a package. There's nothing wrong with store-bought drapery. As a matter of fact, I think they're great if you really like to switch up your drapery options. You can get them really affordably, have them hemmed, and get that custom fit. But the drapes that have the pattern that are coming out of the package on them, they are usually like a polyester. They just don't feel luxurious. They don't feel upgraded. They feel very generic. I recommend steering clear of those. And if you really like a pattern drapery, it's worth investing in a designer fabric or a really beautiful finish, something that has a great texture or is a natural fiber because they just look and feel so much more luxurious. You can actually find some really amazing vintage options on eBay, on Etsy. Go and check those out and find some vintage pattern, vintage drapes from people that they spent the money and invested and now they moved and they didn't wanna leave them. Go check it out because you can find some really great options on the resale market that will get you that beautiful pattern drape look you want without the expense of having them custom made. It's so much better and not basic like getting some pattern drapes from a package from a department store. Now the next thing that can make a home look and feel basic is mass produced decor and artwork. It's not worth it. It's not worth spending your money on because so much of this is just generic. It's mass produced just to sell it. And it's not necessarily a good deal either. Something worth considering is the fact that these pieces are typically made to look a little bit aged. Why would you pay for fake aging when you could get real aging for less or the same price? Doesn't make a lot of sense to me other than the fact that yes, it is readily available and it's easier to find, but it also doesn't have the same character. It doesn't have the same originality. It can feel basic when you see everyone on social media with the same vase, vase, floral arrangement, art piece. It definitely is just a little bit basic. If you wanted to get some of these, I definitely say go for it, but also layer in some authentic vintage pieces into the mix instead of something that's mass produced or just a cheap knockoff. Now, the next thing that can definitely make a home feel basic are the lighting sets. We see these with a lot of builder homes because the builder gets the set really cheap, they don't have to put much effort into it, and they can just throw it up and be done with it. This is great for the builder and for them and their profit margins and whatever, but it's not always great for your home and reflecting your personality. If you like a very transitional style, a lighting set can work in your favor, but for the most of us, a lighting set just feels generic. It feels basic. It feels like everyone has it because everyone in your neighborhood 
whose house was built by that builder probably does, and that's not what we want. Definitely consider upgrading the lighting from space to space, reflecting the personality of that space and the style of it. In my house, I have mid-century style fixtures, I have the vintage original fixtures from the house, and I have crystal chandeliers all mixed together because it reflects that space they're in, but it all reflects my personality and the style of my home. That is character, it's personality. Infuse that into your space by switching out those builder grade fixtures. And I'm just gonna say it, I say it all the time, a boob light is never appropriate in any situation. You can definitely upgrade them with flush mount fixtures that look a lot better, a lot more elevated, and do not remind us of breasts. And I love that for us. The next thing that can definitely make a home look basic are the small rugs you get at department stores, we see them everywhere, I'm over it. We all talk about how to find the right size rug for your house, for your space, for your life, whatever. It's something every interior design channel talks about and I love that for us, but they definitely can make a home feel basic because it definitely looks like you went to the store, you saw a rug on a little rack and you were like, that's a cute rug, I should get it. It doesn't look like the effort was put in or the thought was put into making sure it actually suits the space or it's the right size. As a general rule of thumb, a rug should go under at least in some part all of the furniture in the space. If you have a dining set and it's under the dining table, all of the chairs should be able to be pulled out and stay on the rug. In your living room, it needs to go under that sofa, the coffee table, and the chair. It doesn't have to completely go under them, but it should extend under them at some point because it makes the space feel more connected and less just like a big cavernous space where everything is pushed against the wall and you have a teeny tiny little rug. It looks basic, it doesn't look like you took the time and thought it out, you put the effort into it. Now the next thing that can definitely make your home look a little bit basic is one that might trigger some people. That is the pampas grass. I don't like pampas grass. I've made it clear I'm not the biggest fan of it. However, I think there's a time and a place for it and I know some of you are pampas lovers and I love that for you. If you like the pampas grass, mix it into a dried floral arrangement. That way you get the texture, you get the look and the feel and the visual aspect that pampas brings you. But you also are getting a floral arrangement that's interesting, it's different, and you can have fun arranging it. I love that. Pampas was huge a few years ago and everybody loved it. They jumped on the train. This is like, I don't like pampas grass. I think we can do better than just dead grass. I think mixing an arrangement together of dried florals can look so much more beautiful. Get some dried lavender, get some other dried plants or branches or whatever and mix them together and get a real beautiful arrangement in your space. Now, the next thing that can make a home look basic is going to trigger people. That's fine. It is the backwards books. You all know I'm not a person that just loves decor for the sake of it, and that is what the backwards books are, they do, because you're clearly not reading the book because it's backwards. And maybe you read a book once and you're done with it, and that's fine. Maybe you bought vintage books, that's also fine. But the backward book can just be generic and it looks like decor for the sake of it. There are lots of things you can do instead of that. If you like the color scheme of books, you don't have to organize everything via the Dewey Decimal System. You can mix it together and have what you like in your space. That's fine and that's great. But what you can also do if you do like everything organized perfectly but you want that color scheme and you're like, Garrett, what do I do? When I was a kid and I was in high school, we used to take our textbooks that we had to carry around with us at all times and we would cover them in brown paper bags and then write the names on the side of them because it would protect the cover because otherwise we'd get charged for them at school. It was an entire thing. But that's an idea you can take into your space. You can get wallpaper samples and wrap books in them and then get a little printer, one of those label makers, and write the name of the book on the side of it. If you want the color scheme, you can do that and then you can actually see what the book is. Or if you've got great handwriting, letter it yourself. There's also an entire situation that happened with me that I will be exposing. This is one of my favorite coffee table books. This Leonardo da Vinci book, it's a vintage European print from the 1950s and I love it. I love the color, I love the texture, I love the detail. Look at the aging on these pages. Oh, is that not gorgeous? But on the spine, it is printed upside down. You can see the book is sitting right side up, it's upside down. 
This was in the background of numerous videos and I still get comments about it today that, oh, but the binding on that book is upside down, Garrett. You need to flip it over. It bothers me, it bothers me. If you like your books backwards and upside down, it must bother you because this vintage European print is printed upside down. So if I want the words right side up, the book is face down and I can't use it. So be sure before you jump onto someone and tell them something is wrong or you don't like it, you offer them a creative solution or at least hear them out or at least read the comments before you flood them with complaints about a book being upside down that actually isn't. Well, there you have it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below and share with me what is one thing I did not mention that you feel makes a home look basic. And if you haven't already, please take a moment and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Join the Lashik family. Let me know after you've done that so I can personally welcome you to the channel. I also know that you know someone that they are the definition of basic. They need some help and you're like, Garrett, sweetie, <laughs> they definitely need your help. Share this video with them because friends help friends and I will see you in the next one.